Today we're going to be talking about awesome. yellow poplar weevil and hopefully you can see my slides and uh, gotcha. see this leaf right here. Um, but uh, this time of year, if your tulip trees have seen better days, if their leaves are turning brown, looking like this picture, it could be the work of the yellow poplar weevil. Um, this weevil causes damage to the leaves of yellow poplar trees or tulip trees if you prefer. There are different names for the same tree as well as some other species. Both the adults and the larvae of this insect feed on those leaves. And while its impact can be very noticeable, you can um, see this and be alarmed. Um, this is a native insect that typically does not cause severe problems. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about yellow poplar weevil, what it is and what it's doing in your trees. So first let's look at this weevil. Um, kind of cute if you think weevils are cute. Um, they are small, uh, black or brown in color, and they have this noticeable uh, long snout. Now I have heard um, uh, people say that they look tick-like. Um, but I think that the snout um, sets them apart. It's a native insect that has a single life cycle each year. And typically it's present in small numbers, but you can get some kind of bigger outbreak years where there's more extensive numbers and extensive damage. Um, so the adults of these weevils, here you can see it again, overwinter in the leaf litter. And after they emerge from that litter, they begin feeding on newly emerged um, and leaves of yellow poplar um, and other species creating these distinctive feeding marks that look a little like uh, curved grains of rice, maybe a tan or a brown color on those new uh, leaves. This tends to happen in the late spring and the early summer. Um, and that's kind of the first sign of the feeding by those weevils. And after feeding on the leaves and mating, the females are gonna lay their eggs in a row right along the midrib of that leaf. And you can see a picture of that here. And um, after those hatch, um, those will also feed on the leaves, but the damage they cause looks slightly different. So after hatching those developing larvae, these little grubs are gonna feed as leaf miners. So they're kind of feeding on the leaf tissue between the upper and lower surfaces of that leaf, um, creating a little tunnel uh, where they're feeding. And this tends to happen in early summer. And you can see it's really blotchy and uh, causes kind of bigger brown patches in the leaf. In this one, someone has kind of uh, uh, opened up that leaf mine so you can see what's going on on the inside. Um, and this is kind of a leaf that has examples of both of those types of feeding. Um, the feeding by the adult weevils here, as well as a big blotchy uh, leaf mine caused by the larvae here. Um, so eventually the larvae are going to form cocoons and pupate within those leaf mines, and then they're going to emerge as adults typically in midsummer. Those adults will continue feeding for a little while on the leaves, and then in midsummer, they're going to drop and overwinter in the leaf flint. So they'll go into dormancy and just hang out there. Um, so a little bit on the life cycle of those weevils. What do they impact? Well, their favorite host is yellow poplar or tulip poplar. poplar. Take your pick on the name there. Um, but they also can feed on some other species. Magnolias and sassafras are also susceptible, and you might see some damage on those as well. Because of this, you might sometimes hear them called sassafras weevils or magnolia leaf miners, in addition to being called yellow poplar weevils. A lot of different names for the same thing. Um, so where are they found? They're found broadly throughout the eastern U.S. If you think about the range of some of these species, like yellow poplar, it's got a pretty broad range. But they are most prevalent in the central Appalachian mountains, so areas in Eastern Kentucky and Virginia and West Virginia and Tennessee and Ohio can sometimes experience really heavy damage to foliage. Um, so that's where you'll see the most damage. So for identifying yellow poplar weevil, if you see the weevil itself, it can be pretty helpful. <laughs> you know, again, you might mix it up with a tick or something, but that large snout is pretty distinctive. 
Um, but they can be hard to see because if you think of how tall some of those yellow poplar are going to grow, um, you may not be able to see the tiny little weevils on the leaves unless those leaves fall down. Um, what you might be easier to see is the feeding, those rice-shaped feeding um, pits that they, uh, the adults will make and then feed on that juicy green tissue there. They're kind of a brown, light brown, uh, tan color. This is a leaf that fell out of a tall forest tree during a storm. So because of that, I could see all of these weevils on it and you can kind of see them there feeding. Um, and those brown spots can be a little easier to see and uh, less transient than those weevils. You might also see the leaf mines. Um, again, they're going to have this really blotchy uh, uh, form to them and typically developing on the edges of the leaves. You might see some distortion of that leaf and that whole leaf uh, looking turning brown sometimes. Um, so if the tree is under a lot of stress, you might also see the trees dropping their leaves early. Yellow poplars will commonly drop their leaves in response to any number of different stressors and put on a new flush afterwards. So you'll see it in landscape trees like this one um, that's in response to drought, and that might happen several times over the course of the summer. So while this tree, you can see the yellow poplar weevil damage here, um, probably the yelling on this particular tree is due to drought. Um, but that's kind of, uh, you know, an adaptation that yellow poplar has. It will drop its leaves and it will put out a new flesh. Um, and while this might stress trees, uh, this is something that they do. And it's a lot less damaging to yellow poplar than it would be to some other species like, let's say, oaks, um, who really do not want to be dropping their leaves in the middle of summer. Um, and if it is a real, you know, severe year, if you look up into the canopy, of your forest trees, you might see a lot of browning. Um, and that can be mistaken at a distance for something else that's maybe more serious. Uh, now, it is likely that this stresses the trees out and reduces their growth that year, but it's pretty rare to have severe outbreak years year after year. So when it comes to managing yellow poplar weevil, um, the browning in those leaves, it, it can look bad, but it rarely causes significant damage to the tree multiple years of defoliation that could make the trees weaker and more susceptible to other issues, but it's really unlikely that we have, those weevils are going to cause tree mortality, um, especially in trees that are growing well that are already established. Um, typically, active management of these insects is not necessary, and especially in forest settings, and it's not going to be practical. Some insecticides, however, have been approved for managing yellow poplar weevils, and they're typically most effective at killing those adults that are feeding. Um, in severe cases, let's say you have recently planted uh, trees in urban or landscape settings. They're smaller trees, um, there's not as much foliage. Foliar application of those insecticides um, should, can be done, and it should be done when you're seeing about 10%, uh, damage in about 10% of the canopy. And then repeating that as necessary because those weevils develop over several weeks. So you're likely to kind of see more of them. Um, in addition, that timing is key because uh, those weevils are pretty wrapped up by midsummer. So if this is something you see in the middle of the summer or late summer, um, that's gonna be too late for any treatment um, that year. It's also worth noting that there are many native parasitoids that impact yellow poplar weevil. Um, and so your application of insecticide should be balanced with um, wanting to uh, kind of avoid any unnecessary uh, damage to that natural control that's occurring. Um, so thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about yellow poplar weevil. Now when you see this damage, you'll know more about it and hopefully relax since it's not likely to be a major health concern for your trees.